This is Rugby Roundup. Coming up, we preview the match between Bees and Mosley and take a look at Worcester as they make it through to the semi-finals. Hello and welcome to Rugby Roundup. I'm Paul Bradley and I'm joined in our Fort Dunlop studios by Brian Dick. Hi Brian. Hi Paul. Well, of course, the first game for us today we're looking at is Bees versus Mosley. How do both teams go into this game? Well, it's, it's amazing how, how they, the play, their playoff campaigns have turned around, actually. There was a lot of positivity going in for Bees at the start, at the start of the, the six games, and Mosley were, were maybe you know, the ones under pressure, I felt. Uh, in the last two weeks, that's all changed on its head. Bees have lost two, um, and Mosley have won two. Um, we're going to the situation now on, on uh, Sunday where, where if Bees don't beat Mosley, they're down. Um, so it's been, it's been an incredible turnaround. Um, bees were bees lost at Plymouth on on Friday night, last Friday night, as I've just said, and it was a really poor performance and a, and a terrible time to, to to put in that performance. You know, some of their key guys just just didn't function. Mosley, by contrast, uh, they weren't flu- they weren't fluid and they weren't flowing, but they they eked out eked out a result. And you know, if Mosley's minds are switched on, they're they're a decent side and and they'll be confident they're staying up there. And looking at it from a Mosley point of view, first of all, there's a couple of key areas that you've identified which will be crucial in this game. Yeah, absolutely. First and foremost is Ollie Thomas is kicking. Uh, Ollie's got previous against Bees. He's, uh, he, he's he hit a 52 metre drop goal against them uh, earlier earlier this year. Then uh, at the end of last year, he also uh, he kicked a touchline winning conversion. So um, he, what he does with his boot will be very important for Mosley. It's, it's going in the right direction at the moment. He's he started off the playoff campaign. First two matches he kicked at 58%. Um, last two matches he's kicked at 80, 81, 82%. Uh, now that is that it, it's it's a it's a much it's a better than average um, kicking ratio. And if bees with their discipline pro, discipline issues that they've they've demonstrated against uh, against Plymouth, if those if those uh, those issues return on Sunday, then then Ollie Thomas you know is is in the form to make them really pay. And you also identified that the Mosley scrum could be crucial as well. Yeah, absolutely. It does tend to be crucial uh, against in, in in the derby matches. Uh, we've we've had a couple of occasions this season where where uh, props have been taken off uh, because they've just basically not been able to not been able to, to cope with what's being asked of them. Um, first game at Damson Park, uh, Nathan Williams was taken off for Mosley. Uh, the third game uh, in the first playoff game at Billsley Common. Leo Halavato was subbed because he was just getting penalised penalised out of the game. So the scrums very important. M- Mosley scrummed very well against uh, against Isha. Terry Sigley won a couple of penalties. I thought you know he probably could have had two or three more. I, I thought he had Dave Millard in quite a lot of trouble. And then the final um, the final scrum that Chevy Penny could have scores from. You'll, you'll see the Isha loose head just pops out. He doesn't even try and take the, take the pressure. Um, so yeah, the mostly scrum is uh, is a big part of what they do. And from a bees perspective, I suppose it's going to be about tightening up their defence and cutting out the silly mistakes. Yeah, I mean Mark Woodrow, uh, you know, I rate Mark very highly as a player, but he had an absolute shocker on uh, on on Friday night. He is a sliced kick um, gave Plymouth the first score, and then their final score, he, he missed uh, missed their fullback, um, fell off him in, in 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 the Plymouth half, and you know the defence was cracked from there. I, I wouldn't back Mark to have uh, two poor games in such succession. One one thing about him is he's a he's a very chirpy, he's a very chipper chipper guy, and you know he'll know that he didn't have his greatest game on Friday night. And uh, you know he will. Uh, I, I would imagine him to be a hundred percent better this weekend. And how do you see the game going? Are you going to sit on the fence on this one, or are you going to pick one of the two sides you think is going to come out on top? Well, it's not really a question of sitting on the fence because it is really the flip of a coin, and you know. Is it heads? Is it tails? I'm not, not honestly sure what happens. Who, who's going to be standing when, when the music stops? If you press me for a result, I have a feeling bees will pull it out of the bag this weekend. Um, that will no doubt get the Mosley hordes on my back. But you know, I, I just think bees' need is greater, and desperation is, is pretty uh, pretty powerful motivator at this stage of the season. Okay. Well, moving on to Worcester now. Just a quick word on them, and there's a bit of an interesting angle coming up for their next game. Yeah. Well, they go to London Welsh. Um, they've already made it through to the semi-finals, as, you, as you've said. Um, so there's not a huge amount riding on it, but it'll be interesting for a couple of the London Welsh boys, Eric Lassens and Josh Drawninui, who've actually signed to play for Worcester next season. Now, they, they can't derail Worcester's promotion uh, promotion campaign at this stage. They might, they might further down into the playoffs. But uh, it'll be interesting for them playing against some of their, their, their future teammates if selected. It'll be interesting to see whether Phil Greening wants to go with those two in this match. OK, Brian, well, thanks for that today. And thank you for watching. We'll be back again next week with more Rugby Roundup.